Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica and I'm super excited to have you join me today because we have a really great beginner sublimation video. Now if you like beginner sublimation videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because this is one of many in our series to show you how to use Silhouette Studio for sublimation. All right, guys, so let's talk about Silhouette Studio. Now, if you know anything about me, if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I absolutely love Silhouette Studio. It is my go-to program. I do pretty much anything I can get away with in this program. Um, I do obviously cutting vinyl, those sorts of things. I print my sublimation. I design files here. I um, set up all of my laser files here. Um, I even create like graphics for my website and printables and those sorts of things. So it's a very robust program. And I always start off with that so that, you know, I can tell you that it's worth learning Silhouette Studio because it's a program that will grow with you. I literally, I've been crafting for just under 10 years. And I would say that anything I've ever needed to do outside of photo editing, anything I've ever needed to do, I can do here in Silhouette Studio. So if you're on the fence about learning it for sublimation, you think maybe it's a little bit too much of a learning curve for you. I'm telling you it's not. You can learn how to use it. It's all about consistency. So after that little pep talk, let's go ahead and jump on in. Um, the first well, first, let me tell you, if you need an introduction to Silhouette Studio, then we have a great introduction to Silhouette Studio video already up on the channel. So if you're brand new, if you've never opened Silhouette Studio before, maybe all you've done is download it, go check out that video first. Now, I am going to repeat just a little bit of that information here, more or less as a refresher, but that gives you a really great overview of everything about Silhouette Studio, and it's totally worth watching. All right. Now, Silhouette Studio for sublimation. There are a couple different ways that you can use it. First and foremost, and the easiest to get to know, is setting up your prints to print directly from Silhouette Studio. Now, there are gonna be a couple questions that you have here, and I'm going to answer them as we work our way through, all right? But the very first thing that I wanna do, and this is in regards to printing sublimation designs, is I wanna come up here to the top right-hand side. This is my page setup panel. And what that means is it's going to set up the page that you see here in your design area. So what I want to do, I want to go ahead and turn my machine to none. That automatically turns off my cutting mat because I don't need that to print. And then I'm going to change my media size. Now I'm going to go ahead and select letter. But if you're printing wider format, for example, I print a lot of 13 by 19 sheets, you can do that here as well. Okay. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and turn on my show print border. We'll touch base on that a little bit more. And then I want to go over to my second icon, which are my grid settings. And I want to turn off my grid. I do not need that grid for printing. And for me, just as a visual uh, type of aid, the, the grid gets in the way. Okay. I don't like to look at it, that sort of thing. So that's something that you can do, turn it off or turn it on. Now you'll see that I also, now this is an upgraded feature, but I have, um, crosshairs turned on as a default. You can go ahead and turn those off if you want to right here. All right. And then they won't follow you around. That bothers some people. I get a lot of questions. Why do you have your crosshairs turned on? It's completely personal preference. Um, they don't serve a purpose other than they help me align things up. Okay. But this is my basic page setup. It looks just like if I'm going to print something out on my printer, that is what I'm looking at on my screen. Okay, everything I'm going to set up is going to mimic what's going to come out on the printer side. So as far as setup goes, that's really it. Now here comes the easy part. You have file and open and you have file and merge. Now, because I've already set up my page here, I'm gonna go to file and merge. Let me tell you the difference. File and open opens a brand new tab. So kind of like you can have different tabs on your internet browser, you can have different tabs open in Silhouette Studio. So I instead go to file and merge, and what that does is it imports the file into the existing uh, tab that I'm working on. So I'm going to open directly to my downloads folder. And let me see, I am going to bring in this Galaxy PNG. All right. Now this is just an image file. I'm using a PNG, but you can also use JPEGs. And working with these large format files can be taxing um, on your computer resources. So sometimes if it takes Silhouette Studio a little bit to catch up to what you're doing, just kind of try to be patient with it. 
Okay. But that brings this nice pattern directly into the page that I'm already working with. But what I wanted to show you, the reason I brought this in first, we're actually not going to work with this right away, but I wanted to show you, I can move this off to the side and I can forget about it for now. Like I, if I'm not going to use it right now, I don't have to delete it off the page. I can just move it out of the way. So let's go ahead and bring in our next item and we're going to go back to file and merge. And the next thing I'm going to bring in, you know what, let's go ahead and bring in this SVG file. Now I do have designer edition. Um, you do need that to be able to bring in SVG files, uh, but uh, definitely worth the upgrade in my opinion. Now this SVG file is not grouped together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click and group. And I'm not using that right away either. So let's move that out of the way. Let's move on to our next one. And this one is actually the one that one of the ones we're going to work with. This is a beach sublimation bundle that I downloaded, of course, Creative Fabrica, right? And I can select any of these that I want to work with today. Um, me personally, I'm just going to start off with this number seven. Let's go ahead and bring it in. Now, PNGs that have a transparent background, they actually do something pretty cool in Silhouette Studio. There is a feature called Auto Trace. And what that means is if it has a transparent background, um, Silhouette Studio, as long as it can pick up on that, it will go ahead and remove that background for you. That might be something you're a little bit not used to working with. All right. It's a little something different because you got to remember Silhouette Studio is designed for working with a cutting machine. So it's getting rid of that background so that you can um, cut around it. Now that's not really what we need, but I wanted to go and tell you that because that's where this red line comes from. Now that red line is not going to print, but if it bothers you, you can turn it off up here and just change that to transparent. Okay. Now when we're working with a design, we need to go ahead and talk about sizing. So let's say I have already sized the size that I need for my project. And I want to do this to be, I say we're doing an eight inch mouse pad. So of course I need this to be no larger than eight inches wide, eight inches tall, that sort of thing. All right. So what I'm going to do, it is already selected up here is where I can size whatever I'm working with. I'm going to lock my aspect ratio. Okay. We do want that to be locked. Your aspect ratio is what keeps your design proportionate. So that way, when I type in one dimension, it will automatically update the other dimension proportionately. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to my width. I'm going to highlight that and I'm just going to type in eight and hit enter and silhouette studio will automatically size that for me. And then it's still selected. It's off the screen, but if I use center to page, it brings that center to page. And now my design is a more manageable size. All right. That's what I'm looking for here. So, um, obviously this is just a plain background, which you're more than welcome to use, especially if you're using a photo or something like that, but I want to combine this. So you guessed it. We're going to open up one more file and this is another SVG file. Let's go ahead and we can zoom out right here. And I want to make sure that's grouped together and we can center that to page also. So let's zoom back in. And I think that's a pretty cute little file. Now, of course, we would need to size vitamin C. Let me show you a trick for doing that. So you can actually open. All right. So a lot of your sublimation vendors will give you templates for um, the products that you're using. You can bring those in, whether they're SVG, DXF. Now DXF is your free one. Okay. If you're using the free version of Silhouette Studio, you want a DXF file, um, but SVG DXF. And also sometimes you'll see, I see this from Conde when I purchase from there, um, they will use a CDR format, which is, um, Corel draw, right? So I'm just going to go to file and merge and bring that in like I would any other file. Now, if I need to set up a template, like I said, if we were using an eight inch mouse pad, I can just draw a circle. And then I can come up here with my dimensions and type in eight and center to page. Also, I really like that center to page. Um, it, it does wonderful things for me. So maybe I want to make this large enough to fill in that eight inch circle. So I'm just going to drag the handles and make it larger. And then of course I want to select my SVG file and make it smaller because I want it to fit inside of that circle. So there we go. Now, technically I could print this and be just fine, but let me show you another little trick. Okay. Now with the circle, it's a little easier. All right. But we're just going to create an offset and I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch offset around the entire design. 
And the reason I'm showing you how to do it with an offset is because um, sometimes if you're working with a shape that's not a circle, you still need to know how to do an offset. And this is going to be your print bleed. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that outside circle and I'm going to select my pattern here. I'm going to come over here to my modify panel and I'm just going to choose crop. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut down that background to fit my circle. So if I am using an eight inch circle, I now have an 8.25 inch circle we can send that to the back. And now when I print this out, I will be able to center my mouse pad in the middle of that and know not only that I can get my design centered exactly where it needs to go, but know that I have a print bleed to give me a little bit of wiggle room, which for me is very important. I hate it when I feel like I have to line it up exactly because nine times out of 10, that's not going to happen for me. So having that print bleed area, really, really important. Now I did tell you that the red circle um, won't print, but if you want to, you can go ahead and delete it. And then what I would do is I would grab this group, everything together, and then let's talk about the actual printing process. All right. Now, a lot of you, if you've already been printing with sublimation, you are set up on the printer level to go ahead and have your designs mirrored. And if that's what you have, fine. Absolutely send this to print this way and your printer will know, or rather your printer software will know to go ahead and print it mirrored. If you don't have that, like me, because I'm kind of old school and <laughs> I use my printers for a lot of different things, I can right click and flip horizontally and it will mirror my design for me here. So you, uh, I just bring that up because you have to choose one or the other. Mirror it in the software or mirror it at the printer level. You can't do both because a mirror of a mirror, it means it prints the right way and then you're confused when it comes out. So one or the other. So remember how I said these are right off to the side? I went ahead and put those there because I want to show you. I'm going to go to print. Just hit control P as a shortcut or you can go to file and print in the software. And there it shows me what my preview is. It completely ignores everything that is not on that white design page area. All right. And then I can go to print. I'm going to show you one other thing here. I'm actually not going to select my sublimation printer. I'm going to select a label printer that I have. I'm going to hit apply and cancel. Did you see what happened? Did you see my gray box? Now all of a sudden my gray box does not match my page. That's why I tell you to have the print page set up or the print page border turned on because that really is your first indicator on whether your printer options line up with your design options or rather your silhouette studio options. Okay. So make sure you turn on that border and then pay attention to what's going on. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go back to print. I'm just going to hit print again because that was just my print preview and I can select whatever printer I am going to print from. And then if you need to, you can actually come straight into your preferences here. This is especially true for you Epson users. A lot of times you need to change like your print quality or anything like that. You can do that directly in your preferences here, but I'm just going to hit apply, hit cancel, hit cancel again. And now you'll see my print border is right back where I need it to be. So this is design setup number one. And really that's the basics. You don't even have to do all this because a lot of the designs that you're going to use for sublimation, they're already going to be ready. So you don't really have to bring in all these different file types and edit it down. Like if I was just going to do a shirt, I would just bring in my design, size it and print it piece of cake. But I wanted you to see because a lot of you, if you're looking at using Silhouette Studio for sublimation, maybe you already have a Silhouette cutting machine and you're already familiar with it, but your questions are, you know, like, what can I do with all these SVG files I already have? Guess what? You can use them for sublimation. Grab some cute backgrounds and you are good to go. I mean, you don't even really need a background, but I mean, hey, that's 99% of why most of us switch to sublimation from vinyl because we get, you know, all these beautiful colors and color ranges and effects and things like that. So I just want to show you one more time. Let's bring this in. And this is going to be a little bit of a different um, effect. I want to make sure my aspect ratio is locked. Let's do an eight inch width. Just go ahead and bring it to size with the page. Bring in my pattern here. And it can be, you know, any size. I can go ahead and isolate the part of the pattern that I want to use. 
Um, so, you know, if there's part of the pattern, like for whatever reason, I'm not crazy about that little green spot. Personal preference, guys. That's not a reflection on the pattern. Obviously, it's a great pattern if I chose it. Select them both and crop again. So then I'm taking this regular SVG file that I had, filling it with a pattern, and now I can print it using sublimation. And I chose this beautiful galaxy pattern, but I can do this with a lot of effect patterns too. I can do it with glitter. I can do it with, you know, chromes and metallics and, you know, different types of watercolor. And it just goes on and on and on. So I really love that crop feature. I think it's really fantastic. And it's something to really, you know, get to know when you're learning to use Silhouette Studio for sublimation. So now one more thing that you guys may have a question on, and that is, Becky, what if I am using my Silhouette and I want to do use vinyl with my sublimation? Hey, perfect. Let me tell you, absolutely perfect. That is where I started, um, and I absolutely love using the vinyl products with my sublimation products. Super, super great. So let's just bring this design back just because it's so easy to work with. We're going back to our page setup because, um, I'm assuming, well, you know what? Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's, let's size this down a little bit. We're going to, I was going to say, I'm assuming you're printing a larger format, but you know, but maybe you're not, maybe you're doing a smaller vinyl project. I really like buying the easy subly and the white glitter HTV and using them in 12 inch widths, you know, because I wear an adult large size t-shirt. So I need, you know, pretty much an 11 inch design, but you know, maybe that's not what you're working on. Let's keep it simple because you can also get a really great deal on easy subly sheets that are letter size and they work great in your printer. So let's not overcomplicate it here. I know, I know I almost did that for you guys, but we want to go back to our machine. Go ahead and select the machine that you're using. I'll use my cameo and I do want to move this off the cutting mat area. Okay. Oh, I forgot that from somewhere. That's part of the design. Okay. So what I want to do is go and select my machine. Um, put on a cutting mat. If you don't already have one, select your media size. I'm going to leave this at letter size. And then the next thing I want to do is come up here to my registration marks. Now this is if you're using easy subly because you can use your registration marks and do this as a print and cut. All right. But now I have my cut border. So I need to make sure that this is within the size to be able to use this size easy subly. So if you're already familiar with using print and cut, this is all you need to do. You literally feed your easy subly straight into your printer and it will print the design for you, lay it on your mat, cut around it, whatever your design is. And you'll see if I click over to the send panel, um, I will be able to manipulate what cuts and what doesn't. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to ungroup those because I don't need them grouped. And I need to switch that SVG file to no cut. Now that's only because those were two separate files that I combined. You know, if you're using designs that are ready made, then chances are it's only going to cut the outline anyway, but always double check your cut lines and where they're going to cut. Okay. Now let's go back to the design area because, you know, so we talked about, you would just need to cut this and then you transfer it over using your easy subly mask. Don't worry. If you want to learn how to use easy subly, that is one of our next sublimation videos because it's so fantastic. And I will show you more about using easy subly, but say you already have some white glitter HTV and that's actually what you want to use. You don't even want to use, um, easy subly. You don't want to run it through your printer. You just want to use some glitter HTV. What we're going to do is turn off your registration marks. You only need those if you're doing a print and cut. If you're not doing a print and cut, you don't need the registration marks on. But it's the same basic principle. I'm going to group those back together. Now I can increase this a little bit. What did we have the other one before? Let's do eight inches wide. Go ahead and center it to page just because that's easier for me. And then I do want to flip it because again, we're back to the mirroring the design. So easy subly or a, a material that you feed through the uh, printer like that is the only time you won't mirror it. All right. Pretty much everything else, unless it's a specific blank, you need to get in the habit of mirroring those designs. Don't worry if you don't remember right off the bat, just be prepared that, you know, <laughs> that those will be your test pieces. All right. You can save those use them for test pieces later. Um, but I could just print this out and then I want to be able to cut out my vinyl that matches that. Well, watch when I click over to send, I still have the outline of this design. So I will be able to cut a circle that matches up with the file that I'm working with here. 
So super easy. I can literally just cut that out of glitter, heat transfer vinyl, apply it to, um, you know, my project or, um, I have, I, I have a really amazing video to show you guys. Again, one of our next videos about sublimating on glitter, heat transfer vinyl. Um, but you know, this is how, this is the beginning of it. We're showing you the silhouette studio portion and to show you like how easy it is to work within the software and switch from one to another, to another. So it's very, very versatile. Um, and then, like I said, a lot of you won't even need these tools right off the bat. They're just tools that you already have. And of course you can add text there. There are a lot of other tools. Like I said, I really urge you to check out that, um, introduction to silhouette studio video because it's super great. And it's going to tell you a lot of other great tools that are at your disposal that will also work really well for sublimation. But for today, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully this kind of took the scare factor out of working with, um, Silhouette Studio and Sublimation. Before I go, let me answer one final question because I get this all the time. What about my color profiles? Okay, that is a very legitimate concern because a lot of you need color profiles to get accurate colors on your printer. Silhouette Studio does not use color profiles. Okay. So if that is a concern, there are a couple things that you can work around. Like if I print on my sawgrass, I still go through print manager. Okay. That works really well for me. I haven't had any problems with my colors whatsoever. So what I do is I just print directly through print manager. Um, and I get really amazing colors. If you're working on an Epson and maybe you have a custom color profile that you need for your printer, um, you can still design in silhouette studio, and then you can save these files as PNG. And this is true for your sawgrass too. If you get better profiles cr printing from, um, creative studio, then you can absolutely save this as a PNG file upload it to Creative Studio. And, you know, it's kind of a mix of being able to come here and customize your files and then take them to Creative Studio for printing or take them to another software for printing. Again, I don't have that problem. I've been printing from Silhouette Studio for sublimation since I started sublimation, um, but it's something you can do. It does require an upgraded version. You need the business edition to be able to save files as a PNG format. Okay. So just something to remember your upgraded version, you're looking at, you know, usually 60 to $70, but it is a one-time fee. All right. We do have more information. I know I keep referencing that other video. It's a great video guys. Check it out. I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, hopefully you get started with sublimation in silhouette studio. So guys, how did you feel about learning to use Silhouette Studio for sublimation? Now, like I said, it's a very versatile software. It is free to download and get started. You don't have to upgrade until you are ready or, you know, you don't have to upgrade at all, but it is just so many things that you can do directly in Silhouette Studio that you don't get with a lot of other software. So I think it's perfect for sublimation, especially if you already have a silhouette cutting machine because you're already familiar. But even if you're not and you're looking for a really great software, definitely give this one a try. So I'm going to wrap it up for today, guys. But as always, definitely make sure you leave your comments down below. You guys know I love to hear from you. And let me know what type of software and sublimation videos you want to see in the future because I'm always open to video requests and suggestions. So thanks again for stopping by today, guys. I do really, really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.